Hi there, um, this video comes with some exercise files and a cheat sheet for Photoshop. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for those. Okay, it's part of my larger course, which you can go and check out. There'll be a link there as well. Um, all right, enjoy the video. Hi there, this video we're gonna look at exporting a few different ways. Okay, we're gonna look at print, and then we're gonna look at social and web, and then we'll look at exporting for other Adobe products. Okay, you're sharing it between your Photoshop document, between say Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects. Let's start with print. Okay, let's say we, we made this earlier in the course, okay, and we wanna get this out to our printer. The best way to give it to them instead of a JPEG is something called a PDF. I don't need to explain, you probably know what a PDF is, but to get it out of Photoshop, go to File, and we go to save as. It's a weird kind of place for it. Okay, and down here we wanna find Photoshop PDF. I'm gonna stick it onto my desktop. I'm gonna give it a name. This is my All Stars. I put the date backwards often when I'm sending things out. So if there's any amends, it's got some sort of kind of code on it so I know which version is what and which version the amends were made to. And the nice thing about this, I'm gonna click on save. It's gonna freak out a little bit. It's gonna open up a PDF document. All you need to do is set it to high quality print and turn preserve Photoshop capabilities off. You turn this off because basically with this on, it's just a Photoshop document. It's not really ready for print. It's file size is huge and it keeps in the PDF lots of detail that the printer just doesn't need. So let's turn it off. Let's click save PDF. And that now on my desktop should be, on my desktop, all stars PDF. It's small enough. You can see it's only 1.7 megabytes and that can be sent to a printer. Now let's say I wanna send something else to print, but I just want, instead of a PDF, they've asked for a JPEG. Okay, this is pretty easy. I'm gonna do it to this option we've got here. We made it, I wanna send it out to my printer and that is one a JPEG. When you go for a print JPEG, it's different from a web JPEG. They have slight variances. They look the same, but one has a lot more data, like this one here is gonna have a lot more as a print document. So to do it, let's go to File, Save As. Okay, and in here, let's pick JPEG, just the JPEG one, not any of the other fancy ones. We just want the plain old JPEG. I'm gonna stick it on my desktop and I'm gonna call this one Bottle Island. And in, if you don't like the dates backwards, just a V1, V2 works just as good. Now, if this is going to a printer, say I'm a photographer and I've got this looking perfect, I probably wanna crank this up to as large as file as I can. It's gonna make the file size bigger, but it's gonna retain a lot of the quality that I've done and put into my Photoshop document. Okay, so a PDF is the all round, just send a PDF, it's easy, it's emailable, the file sizes are small. And what you don't know is that it still retains a lot of the vector that's in some of, say, the logos and text. So it will print nicer. But if you just have images, a JPEG will print just as good because there is no vector, there is no logos and text to keep that crisp edge on. As long as when you're saving that JPEG, you use the file save as, not the file, export save for web or export as, which we'll do in a second. And just make sure that quality slider is dragged to the top. Okay, so that's the print. Let's look at going out for social or web. So we've got this object here and we wanna send this out to our website, okay? And they've given us a specific size we need to use. We looked at this before, we're gonna to go to image. We're gonna to go to image size. And at the moment, it's, it's way too big. It's becoming a quite a big file and it doesn't need to be this big. It's just way too big. So I'm gonna make it, they've asked for it to be no more than 1500 pixels wide. So I've switched it to pixels, put in this width. I've clicked okay. Now I wanna save it as one of two options. Okay, if I want this background in, it's gonna work best as a JPEG. JPEGs are great for quality and they keep the file size really small. The one thing they don't do though is transparency. If I want this background off and I want just the model on a transparent background, and this only happens generally when you're going to a website and they want, they want to be able to see through to other parts of the website, this kind of part to be invisible. So let's look at both. So with it on, let's go to File, Export, and we're gonna send a JPEG, but we're gonna do it the proper way for web. Okay, we're gonna use the export as. It doesn't seem as exciting as say for web, but export as has some nicer features. Let's go to export as. The cool thing about export as is that, you know how we went to image size and adjusted it? We could do it in here on the fly. We don't have to do it that way I just showed you. That was a waste of time. <laughs> okay, we can do it here. Keep the original at the big size and just adjust the size on the way through. We can pick a JPEG. The nice thing about this JPEG is that it's different from a print one, mainly because it excludes some of the data that is only needed for a printing document, not for going online. So the file size is gonna be smaller. 
then it's up to this slider here on your quality. Whereas it went to print, we're not too worried so much about file size because we're probably emailing it or sticking it on a USB stick, so we can keep it quite high. But we're going to a website, they want it as low as you can go. So what you want to do is down here, be at 100% and then just go as low as you're willing to go. Watch this, I'll get down to like 2%. You might zoom in one more because you can see it's starting to do all that yucky noisy stuff. Okay, uh, so how high do I need to go? It's up to you and like what you, some images will go quite low and some images will have to be quite high before they start looking bad. This one here, it's a professional photograph, both of them. So I can go quite low. So I'm gonna go up to 100%. It looks pretty good at 40%. The file size over here is tiny, it's 0.1 megabytes. So I'm happy with all of that. You don't need to worry about anything else here. Click export all, give it a name. I'll go into my desktop. This is going to be my here 01. And it's going to be my JPEG. Click save. And that's the JPEG version. Let's say that I want to do the transparent version. So JPEGs just don't allow transparency. We go to the same place to export a PNG. File, export, export as. And in here you can see it's defaulted to JPEG. And you see it just fills in the background with white. It's not what we want. We want this one here called PNG. And as long as transparency is ticked, you can see you get that kind of invisible checkerboard looking thing. Same thing, it's remember the width that I've got it down to 100 pixels. I'm going to click export. Desktop. This one's going to be called here 02. Click save. Let's jump to my desktop and I'll show you those two files. So on my desktop, there's here one and here two. Can you see the file size different? The PNG is about twice the size, a little bit more. Not a big deal, unless you're running a website. And if you were putting that on my website, I wouldn't be happy because that's nearly half a megabyte. It's ginormous. But if I wanted the transparency and I needed it a thousand pixels, this is something I'd have to live with. But JPEGs are smaller, but don't have transparency. So you might have to decide. Most of the time, you're probably just kind of using JPEGs, but there'll be the occasion that you'll need a PNG. Another thing you can do straight out of uh, Photoshop is there's this option up the top here called Share. So I've got my image here. Um, see this little option here? You might not have it if you've got an earlier version of Photoshop. Click on Share the image. Okay, you'll have to, if it's really big, you'll have the option of getting down to small and you'll have to log into these different accounts. For me, I love Instagram for this type of sharing, but for some reason it's not there. I bet you by the time you're watching this video, it'll be in there. But you can do cool things like I can share it with my email, I can share it with Twitter and Facebook straight out of Photoshop. And basically it knows what to do and gets the very best out of it for those different platforms. There's a little sneaky trick. Let's look at the last option here where we are. Um, we've made this, remember, it's got different layers. We've got the girl on the front there, got the text behind it. And I want this now to go into an InDesign document. So instead of saving out a PDF or a JPEG or a PNG, it's best just to save it as a PSD. You don't have to save it at all. I'm going to save it to put it on my desktop. So save as onto my desktop. It's still going to be a Photoshop document. So it's going to be called Sol V1. Save. Maximize compatibility. Perfect. So I don't actually do anything. I just leave it as the working Photoshop document. Then in InDesign, let's say it's this cover that I want to replace. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is from the InDesign course. I've got an InDesign course if you want to jump in and do that as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Place, which is InDesign's import. I'm going to find my desktop, and I'm just going to use that PSD that I was working on. Sol V1. Click Open. I'm going to click, hold, and drag it out. It's totally not appropriate for this uh, cover, mainly because it's to do with gardening. And now I have a kind of a landscape image to go uh, into my cover here. But let's say that I decide that that's perfect for me. It's exactly what I needed. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to arrange it. I'm going to send it to the back. I'll delete this original one I had in here. But let's say I've got my image in. I've been working on a Photoshop for the cover, but now I need to put it into this longer document. You can see InDesign has a few different pages here. The reason why you just keep it as a PSD is that InDesign will keep that link. And then when you do adjustments in Photoshop, so let's open up Photoshop and let's decide we're not using the text now. We're going to hit save back into InDesign. And in InDesign under the links panel, there's this little asterisk here that says caution. Double click to update, double click, and it updates. Let's jump back into Photoshop. We want the text, but we're gonna change the uh, wording. I'm gonna put Dan, because <laughs> I like writing my name all the way through this course. Okay, I'm gonna save it back into InDesign. 
and this one here, double click to update. And there's the giant Dan in the background. It works the same for most other Adobe products. Illustrator, you can go to file place and put in the same PSD. After Effects, you can bring in Illustrator. I've already said Illustrator, Premiere Pro, Adobe XD, Muse, rest in peace. Just use the PSD, it's the easiest kind of inter-application format. All right, so that's kind of a brief roundup of the ways of exporting out of Photoshop. You and me are getting close to the end. There's a few more videos, hang in there. I am. Just a couple more, then green tea time.